welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. According to the Ministry of Economic Development, Ukraine has ranked second in the world in terms of growth in the doing business rating since 2009. And since 2014, it has risen by 41 positions. Due to deregulation alone, Ukraine has already allowed entrepreneurs save more than 1 billion hryvnias annually. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky promised to make doing business conditions in Ukraine even more attractive. To talk more about this, we're joined in the studio today by Yaroslav Grigorchak. He's the Deputy Business Ombudsman in Ukraine. Helen, thank you for joining. Good to see you again, Antonina. So, in doing business 2019, Ukraine rose from the 76th position to the 71st spot among 190 countries of the world. And uh, the team of our new president, Vladimir Zelensky, has claimed uh, that it believes that Ukraine could make it to the top 10. In your personal opinion, how realistic is this scenario? Uh it's realistic, provided that realistic timeline is to be uh, foreseen uh, if we are targeting such an uh, objective. What time frame are we talking about? Uh, well, I would, uh, uh, in terms of my wild guess, I would uh, speak in terms of three, five years, if we're talking about top 10 in doing business. You think this is possible within the three, five years to raise from the 71st place to the top 10? Uh, within five years, if there will be a comprehensive, systematic uh, work done, uh, specifically targeted at uh, uh, attaining those uh, factors that determine uh, any country's mm -hmm. uh, ranking in doing business, uh, why not? Uh, we've got to be uh, optimistic, but uh, this is not the matter of a couple of years for sure. Let's take the time frame of five years that you've just mentioned. What would be the priority steps in order to achieve the top 10? Uh, well, they effectively reflect those 10 uh, um, indexes mm. that uh, once aggregated uh, allow to, uh, to, to, to appraise the country's uh, ranking as, as such. Mm. Uh, the areas where Ukraine is lagging behind, uh, however, where certain improvements are imminent, is the quality of the bankruptcy insolvency regime. Uh, there has been a, a recent uh, bankruptcy code adopted that is still due to enter into force. Once it's done, uh, as, as I understand, it, uh, it's supposed to be reflected in the Ukraine's ranking in, uh, for 2020. Mm -hmm. um, uh, improvements in the field of uh, uh, quality of customs uh, procedures, mm -hmm. international trade uh, as such, mm -hmm. um, uh, liquidation of uh, uh, businesses, uh, the area of getting hooked up to electricity where certain efforts mm. has been made. Uh, uh, but even though the legal framework uh, on its face is uh, not that bad, actually, in comparison to how it looked like uh, four years ago, still uh, uh, a lot needs to be done in order to shorten the length of time while businesses are getting hooked up to electricity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, how many steps are needed to um, uh, actually achieve and receive this, receive this, this, this service. Um, at the same time, it's worth mentioning that in terms of Ukraine's uh, uh, investment climate, uh, not only those factors that are determined by uh, doing business ranking needs to be taken into account, because, for instance, a very popular theme, uh, and we've discussed this even in this studio a couple of times, which is uh, the illicit pressure inflicted by law enforcers against mm -hmm. businesses, this factor is not even reflected, it's not even taken into account as such uh, by uh, the World Bank in the uh, doing business ranking. However, mm -hmm. we all understand that in terms of Ukraine's perception, it's crucial. Uh, but it's not the part of the uh, 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 of those merits that are being taken into account in order to uh, assign countries ranking when it comes mm -hmm, to the methodology mm -hmm, employed mm -hmm. by the World Bank. Well, yet and still, speaking of law enforcement, um, Zelensky's team said that it's going to ease uh, the pressure of the law enforcement mm -hmm. on the uh, companies doing business in Ukraine. And um, 
I have some numbers here that say over the past three years the government has repealed about 1,300 obsolete acts that created unnecessary pressure on business. And President Zelensky and his team have already cancelled 167 decrees, among them 61 decrees in the economic sphere, which were issued from 1991 to 2000. So, now that we're getting rid of the bills and the laws that are uh, that have created unnecessary pressure on business, they obviously should be replaced with the bills and the laws that are going to be helping business develop. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what should be done in that sphere? What kind of laws do we need to uh, make our business sphere prosperous? Uh, a few points. Uh, first, those uh, uh, regulatory acts that has been uh, uh, repealed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and thanks God that this actually happened, uh, they are not related as such to the law enforcement sphere. This is okay. m mostly in the direction towards uh, achieving the right uh, uh, pace of what we call a uh, deregulation reform. Mm -hmm. um, as far as law enforcement sphere is concerned, the key law that needs to be adopted is the law which would foresee establishment of a single law enforcement uh, body uh, tasked to investigate economic, fiscal, customs, uh, traditional so-called business uh, mm -hmm. crimes. Mm -hmm. What we have right now is the overlapping uh, investigatory authority uh, scattered uh, around the few uh, law enforcement agencies, national police, uh, state Security Service, uh, the so-called tax police. Uh, this needs to be uh, uh, get rid of uh, and replaced with uh, one authority uh, that, uh, among other things, would enjoy a significant degree of a so-called analytical component in its work. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty much in accordance with the best international practices in the, in the sphere. And ultimately, uh, with the right uh, uh, manner in which the political will could be exercised on the level of the top management of such an agency, uh, inadvertently that would uh, uh, result in less of a pressure inflicted by a law enforcement uh, uh, apparatus as such vis-a-vis uh, mm. -vis, uh, business. Okay. What are the main challenges that uh, the companies and uh, Ukrainians or uh, foreigners doing business in Ukraine face currently in Ukraine? I can uh, refer to our latest uh, uh, operational report, as we, as we call it. It relates to our results um, uh, achieved in the second quarter of this year. Mm -hmm. We received in total 398 complaints, which is some... Uh, 2% less than in the previous uh, reporting period. Okay. And we observed uh, a few of the tendencies within these uh, uh, statistics. Uh, uh, the number of complaints uh, uh, challenged, uh, lodged to challenge uh, various types of malpractices at the part of the fiscal mm. authorities has actually grown and uh, reached uh, some 60% uh, in the second quarter mm -hmm. of, of this year. Uh, if you were to look a little bit inside of these statistics, you, you will observe that uh, many of those complaints are aimed at challenging um, uh, what is the suspension of registration of VAT invoices mm. by, uh, by fiscal authorities. However, even within this uh, subcategory, the nature of the complaints is kind of evolving because what we see right now is kind of a growing trend towards the number of uh, complaints that are attempting to challenge failure of the law of, of, of the fiscal authorities to enforce court decisions actually ordering them to uh, register tax invoices mm -hmm. uh, we received uh, a growing number of complaints on uh, what uh, relates to the administration of the uh, system of uh, uh, automatic administration of VAT. However, we received uh, less uh, complaints within this uh, tax block uh, on uh, uh, those instances when business is unhappy with the results of the tax audits. And actually, we received less complaints on uh, 
uh, those instances when uh, business is uh, challenging uh, various types of malpractices at the part of our tax police, which we still account as the subcategory of our tax mm -hmm. the complaints. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Why? Because exactly a uh, tax police is sitting on the same roof with the state fiscal service, which is inherently wrong. And that's yet another reason why we need to really replace that, that, that body uh, with, 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 with right. the single law enforcement authority. As for law enforcers as such, uh, the number of complaints has not grown in the uh, uh, last reporting uh, quarter. Uh, we received uh, uh, actually a smaller number of complaints lodged against uh, national police. Only three complaints reportedly has been Should lodged to, to challenge uh, uh, alleged uh, mal malpractices at the part of the state sec security service. Uh, the number of complaints lodged uh, against uh, um, uh, malpractices at the part of a prosecutor's office remain the same. Okay. And uh, 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 apart from these two big blocks, uh, what we have uh, is the sort of a remaining executive authorities, regulators, state agencies, ministries, and in there the number of complaints has actually grown as well by the tune of 9%. Mm-hmm. Does the statistics show that business in Ukraine needs protection? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the, the, the number of complaints that, I, that is lodged with us allows the one to make certain, uh, you know, statistical aggregations and therefore certain conclusions. And I guess uh, uh, we are quite well positioned uh, uh, by having a systemic look at the uh, actual merits of our complaints to see certain tendencies, mm -hmm. certain uh, evolving uh, trends mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, that characterize the quality of uh, relations between uh, business and uh, government in Ukraine. Um, and I guess to answer your question, I would say that uh, indeed business needs, needs protection. Uh, but at the same time, what needs to be taken into account that we are operational for the fifth year already, because mm -hmm. we got launched in right. May 2015, and uh, businesses uh, became uh, ostensibly became more aware about our existence and uh, uh, maybe are more willing to uh, take uh, Business Ombudsman Council into account while elaborating their uh, defense uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. And what about the investment climate in Ukraine? How would you evaluate it right now? Um, uh, see, I'm, uh, Is Ukraine attractive enough for foreign investors? Let's paraphrase that. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm hopeful that what we are observing is the, in, is, is, uh, uh, the trend uh, where we are on the rise as a country. Uh, uh, I can only speculate that uh, those uh, recent uh, uh, changes, improvements that we received uh, in terms of our sovereign rent, uh, mm -hmm. ranking at the part of the international ranking institutions actually uh, proves uh, that fact. Uh, the uh, currency is, not doing, is, do, is doing not that bad. Um, I would agree on that. Uh, so all, all in all, the um, yeah, perception uh, uh, that uh, both uh, internal and external uh, investment community uh, shows towards the uh, change uh, of the Ukrainian uh, political mm -hmm. regime, uh, I think that anticipation is quite uh, quite positive. Um, okay. I. I, I uh, I, I don't see any particular signs to comment that things are actually developing otherwise. Well, thank you so much for coming here and for providing us this, let's be honest, this kind of positive information. And we do have positive plans to make it to the top 10 of the doing business ranking. Within, <laughs> so next, five, uh, within yes. next five years. Yeah. So let's hope that's going to happen because Ukraine is capable. Thanks so much for coming again. Thank you. That was Yaroslav Grigorchak, he's the Deputy Business Ombudsman in Ukraine. Thank you so much for watching UATV, stay tuned for more. Yeah.